All right, we're recording, and Camilla is going to show us some pain with the back button. All right, let's do it. Camilla. Okay, guys, if you see here, I'm going, let's say I'm up to day five in induction. I click, let's say, on the second item. And then I want to go back to the module and see another item in the same module. If I click on go back, I go back to the top of Sugar Learning, which is day zero, not in the module that I was before. So I was okay. wondering so, if there is a way yes. when I click on go back to go back to the module that I was in, not to the top of. Right, okay. So uh, yes, you're right. Um, it should keep context of where on the page you are at. Um, that is something we could definitely do. Uh, if you just click on a sugar learning item again, Camilla, I think before we make this change, um, just click on E. Well, let's see uh, we should, one. Yeah, I would like to know um, who is actually using the go back button, whether it's used very often, because my experience is it's not used much. My, my, I would assume it's not used much. It could be wrong. Um, so just leave that. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, sorry. So I think the first thing that we should do is measure who's using the go back button. Let's hover over go back. We should measure who's doing that and who's using the breadcrumbs at the top. Uh, I think the breadcrumbs at the top are another thing we should measure before we do this. Um, and then there is another thing under the go back button. In this case, it's the module induction day zero. So those three things should be measured. So whether people are using the um, the breadcrumb, the go back, or uh, the heading there um, before we make any changes, it is possible uh, we could delete the go back button because I'm not sure if it performs anything different than the back button in the browser. So why do you click go back instead of use the back button in the browser? No. Do you mean this one? Yes. So let's do that again. Go down to day five. Module five. Yeah. And then go to it. And then click the back button on the browser instead of the go back button. OK, so here you are. And then this one, right? In the browser. Yes. Yes. And so I mean, what's your experience with that one? So just, just wait, because sometimes it, it drops down to the context of the page and it, it didn't, did it? So it's no, the same it's problem. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, it's definitely something we should fix. Uh, do you need the go back button if you've got the back button in the browser? I think it's not obvious, this one. Well, at least okay. for someone that it's not techy. Right. But you use a lot of other UIs. You use um, Time Pro. It doesn't have a go back button. Um, I don't. By yeah. the way, for context, I don't use Time Pro. Time Pro very often. Okay, but you use um, the internet. It doesn't yes. have a go back button. Yeah. You just use the back button in the browser, right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I think we should measure who's using the go back button. If it's only Camilla, we should ditch the button and let people use the browser. But we should definitely fix the bu the bug where when you go back, it does not uh, go back down to the part of the page you're at, which should be fixed. So anything else, Camille? Happy with that? Yes, that's it. Thank you.